Scikit-learn has long been a popular library for getting started with machine learning. But if you haven't had a chance to try it out yet, that's all right. Let's go check it out together. Welcome to Cloud AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufang Guo, and on this episode, I'll help you get started using Scikit-learn in a Kaggle kernel and point you to some resources to guide your learning moving forward. Let's start with a little dash of history for context. Scikit-learn was originally called scikits.learn and started life as a Google Summer of Code project by David Cornepo. The scikit part of the name came from it being a SciPy tool kit. And from there, scikit-learn has steadily gained adoption and popularity to where it is today, a well-documented and well-loved Python machine learning library. If you take a look at scikit-learn at scikit-learn.org, and you definitely should, you'll quickly notice that the version number is quite low, 0.19 as of this recording. Don't be scared off by that. The library has been around for quite a while and is very well maintained and quite reliable. What's really neat about scikit-learn is the rich suite of tools for doing things that I like to call around machine learning. It includes everything from dataset loading and manipulation to pre-processing pipelines and metrics. In my opinion, the really incredible part about scikit-learn is the vast collection of machine learning algorithms that are all included. And you can just try them out, most of them with minimal code adjustments. It's truly an amazing way to get a handle on what different types of models do, as well as gain some intuition around how the various parameters for a given model perform. Let's take a look now at a simple example of scikit-learn in action on a Kaggle kernel. We have a data set here of zoo animals just 101 different animals. The classification task is to determine which of the seven different classes these animals are in. We'll load it up using our typical approach with pandas. Note that the class type field is in the final column, and that's the column we'll be interested in predicting on. In the past, we shuffled and split the data by hand using pandas, as we can see here. Now, we won't run that because scikit-learn has consolidated all these tasks into one function since they're just so commonly used, and it's called train test split. It takes care of creating training and test data for your features and labels. We can see the shapes of these are exactly as we'd expect. The default is to use 25% of the data for the test and the remaining 75% for training. We'll use a support vector classifier, or SVC, in this example. But you can easily swap out this line for a different machine learning algorithm. Next, we'll call fit on it, which is really the same as train. And then we'll call dot score to evaluate the model performance. Finally, we call predict to try out a few examples. As you can see, scikit-learn has an API that maps really, really similarly to the conceptual workflow making it easy to use. So that was just a very simple, quick look at how you can integrate scikit-learn into some of the existing work that we've been doing. But I know that you can do much more. Dig into the tutorials and the documentation and make some awesome models. Next time, we'll talk about the other side of machine learning with scikit-learn, making predictions and how to scale that up. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. And if you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe to get all the latest episodes right when they come out. And don't forget to explore the vast world of machine learning models that Scikit-Learn has to offer, all with a simple, clean API.